I would like to bring the meeting back to order. Uh, at this time, we're going to ask, there was some clarification from legal counsel on some questions that came up uh, previously during the first group. Thank you, Mr. Morning. President, members of the board. Um, as you may recall, Trustee uh, Zia had a question about um, what happens after you make a provisional appointment. And uh, the section that addresses that is Ed Code Section 5091C1. If I tolerate my reading for just a moment. If a provisional appointment is made within the 60-day period, which is what you guys are working on, the registered voters of the district may, within 30 days from the date of the appointment, petition for the conduct of a special election to fill the vacancy. A petition shall be deemed to bear a sufficient number of signatures if signed by at least the number of registered if signed by at least the number of registered voters of the district equal to one and one half percent of the number of registered voters of the district at the time of the last regular, regular election for governing board members or 25 registered voters, uh, whichever is greater. Um, I understand that there were last go around about 53,000 registered voters in uh, area two and so the number would be something like 765, 795 uh, signatures. Thank you. All right, thank you. The other question uh, that I, I raised as we recessed is that uh, the next group we had down at approximately 7.30 to begin. Uh, if they are here, and we're not 100% sure of the individuals, if they are here, well, that's great when people shake their head. I'm, I think, uh, well, that's one. Okay, I'm gonna look out in the audience and anyone shaking your head, you're part of the count then. All right, if we do have everyone here, can we proceed or do we need to wait till 7.30? I, I think you can proceed. Um, there's, there's probably no reason not to. Um, I don't know if the, all of the candidates are gathered in one place. If they are, you can ask some, someone to ask them and to see if they have a problem with it. We, no, we, are, we are having them in the, the staging room across the way. Can we find out if they are here or not? The first person speaking will be Susan, so, I know followed Susan by Leon. Here, correct? Susan's here. Yes. Then Leon, Mario. And Leon is here. Nat, uh, Mario is here somewhere. Mario is here. Natalie is here. Uh, Juan and then Irma. So we know this, I mean, my understanding is what I've heard is the first few speakers are present, but are all the speakers here? That's a question I just have. Pardon me? Yeah, that, that's my concern. We, we randomly pick these individuals. Yeah, could someone please just check to see if the... Again, I, Susan, I'm told, is here. Leon, Mario, Natalie, Juan, and Irma. Sounds like they're enjoying themselves out there, whatever they're doing. I think Juan Lopez is here too. I see it's him in the crowd. And then Irma uh, Archuleta, I think that's her coming in. So I think we have everybody. All the speakers we're going to ask to uh, uh, wait in the room across the way. And we will have someone come and get you at the appropriate time. That's our game plan. And then you're more than welcome to stay after you've been interviewed in the boardroom. All right, so the answer to the question is I think we're good to go. All right. So at this time, the, uh, and my, my appreciation on behalf of the board to all the speakers, uh, they've all been very direct on their comments, which is so, unlike elected officials, so my congratulations to them all. Uh, so we're gonna begin with Susan.
Thank you, Luann. You're all here. Thank you. Susan, what uh, I'm going to do is you have a five minute introduction. I will be the timer. Uh, at four minutes, I'll do this. Uh, so please don't think I'm interrupting you. Then during the uh, 15 minutes on the questions that are uh, asked of all the candidates, you'll see me do five minutes, 10 minutes, and then if you're at 14 minutes. So just, uh, again, my apologies for doing it in that way. But So for the record, if you could please introduce yourself and then you have five minutes for your self-introduction. Thank you, my name is Susan Redfield. And I first want to thank each and every one of you for being here tonight and taking such a, making such a commitment and dedication to this process and to the Long Beach City College and particularly to Area 2. So I want to thank you all for this time commitment. Um, my presentation is broken into three sections. First, I'm going to give a little personal background, then some of the substantive uh, qualifications I have, and then some of the procedural things that you would ask be addressed. Uh, my personal background, I was actually born into education. Um, and what that means is that I was the first baby born on the campus of Amherst College in Massachusetts and lived there when I was, until I was two because my dad had been in World War II, came back with my mom and on the GI Bill. So education's in my blood. Um, I, uh, um, uh, 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 after high school and college, I moved to New York City where I uh, uh, completed my social work degree and worked as a social worker until my husband dragged me. Um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I wanted to say, after college I lived in New York and I got a master's in social work. And I worked at Spence Chapin Adoption Agency on a groundbreaking research study following 1,000 foster children over a 25-year longitudinal period to assess their, um, the impact of interventions. It was an amazing project. My husband dragged me from New York to Chicago. I finished my social work degree and worked for a number of years until I decided to go to law school. And I practiced law for a number of years until the dean of my law school asked if I would come to the university and become a development officer with their advancement program. Um, my university experiences have always included direct work with trustees, whether at IIT in Chicago or at Caltech or USC. Uh, and the leadership of those trustees taught me the distinction between being a policymaker and between being an administrative implementer. And they also taught me the vital role of promoting and supporting the institutions in their relations with the public, with their other constituencies, the students, the faculty, and the classified employees. My substantive qualifications, my Long Beach uh, experience, I came to Long Beach uh, 17 years ago, worked for a short time with the Aquarium of the Pacific. And during my first week in Long Beach, I, I attended Crescendo, the uh, symphony's fundraising event, and met Peggy Reap. And those of you who may know Peggy, I didn't know at the time, of course, that she is a grand dame and a, an important, was an important um, philanthropic and volunteer leader in our city. And she informed me that I should become a member of Cameo, the mentoring program with the Assistance League of Long Beach. Uh, she sponsored me, I did, and 16 years later, I've been mentoring Long Beach City College students and high school, area high school students who have gone on to become students at Long Beach City College. During my second week in Long Beach, I met Diane Jacobus, um, uh, who is, continues to be one of my closest friends. And she uh, introduced me thereafter to Beverly O'Neill, who sat me down and educated me about Long Beach City College and the California State higher education system. Why? Because my son was at Wilson High School and had the foggiest idea what he was going to do with his life. He came to City College, even though back east, City Colleges were not what I thought I would be sending my son to. He had a great experience, went to USC, is now in his third year as a graduate student at Cal Poly Pomona, and his life is wonderful, and I owe Long Beach City College big time. Um, uh, Diane also informed me that I should become involved with the Long Beach Public Library Foundation, uh, which I did, and I continue to serve on that board to this day. Um, I've owned my home in Area 2, uh, for 10 years, I'm familiar with uh, four community groups, the Wrigley Neighbors, WANA, uh, NAG, and the Renegades, and also the core concerns in the community which have to do with crime and safety. They have to do with economic development and jobs, uh, with quality of life, and with the rail yard project. Um, I wanted to talk 
about my experience with the residents. I was the chair of the Long Beach Reads One book program for the past six years and have worked with uh, educational programs, Long Beach Unified City College and Cal State, community groups and other organizations. On the board of Long Beach Public Library Foundation, I've worked with residents and city leaders with the advocacy programs, board development and strategic planning committee. I've also been on the Camp Capital Campaign for Assistance League Long Beach Qingdao Sister City Organization, and the Steel Magnolias. I'm familiar with the Student Success Initiative and, and its two goals, including expanding access to campuses and helping more students succeed. Um, I recognize the need to listen to and collaborate with all Long Beach City College stakeholders, including students, faculty, and classified employees. And I feel that I would be an asset to the team here, and I would be honored and privileged to serve as a trustee. Questions board, that chair recognizes trustee Baxter. Good evening, Susan. Uh, what do you see as the most important issues to be addressed district-wide in the Long Beach Community College District, and how would you approach these issues with your fellow board members? I think that's such a great question, and as I was trying to narrow down the answer to that, which, because I have here seven issues, um, it seems to me that certainly the student success the workforce development and fiduciary health are the three core issues district-wide. Um, I was concerned about campus morale as an issue, uh, hiring minority employees as an issue, but I want to stay focused on the student success. And I think that as I researched that um, um, issue and how the, uh, the, the faculty and the staff, particularly president and superintendent, have addressed the uh, programs that are currently in place, I think we need to, particularly with regard to the area I'm representing, area two, we need to compare the numbers of those successes today with what's going on in area two. I have a feeling that a lot of the successes might not be reflected in our area, and we need to address ways that we can fix that. Um, the second issue relating to workforce development, I know the uh, Goldman Sachs program is doing very well and that that, along with a lot of other outreach into the community in terms of the business community and the certificate programs, some that are no longer here, which has obviously been a big issue. Um, but I think the, um, uh, the need to really reach out into the area to businesses and assist them in um, uh, making uh, more jobs available. Um, fiscal health is clearly an issue at all times with any public institution. I think that the cutbacks that have had to been, be made and issues related to student and faculty and classified employees um, uh, make it a difficult time. It's been worse, but it's certainly still struggling. So those would be the three issues. Okay, thank you. Good evening, Susan. Um, how does an effective board of trustees ensure opportunities for faculty, staff, classified staff, students, community members, and other stakeholders to get their views to the board on important policy issues without seeming to be advocating for a position one way or the other? Well, I was a little questioning that question myself because I wasn't sure whether we were saying um, that the trustee is advocating for the position or we don't want the person to be seeming to advocate. And obviously, they want to advocate for their position themselves. The, the point, I think, that I wanted to address is how do we make an open and transparent board? And it seems that all issues and causes require openness and sympathy and empathy and listening. As a social worker, I learned that. As an attorney, I certainly learned that. But it doesn't mean you can't advocate. However, listening and being open um, doesn't necessarily mean acceptance of the issue. We have open meetings for the trustees no matter how contentious or controversial. Efficiency with written questions, I think, has made a big difference. So if the question is, somebody comes to me and says, hey, you're a trustee. Um, I'd like this as an issue to be addressed on the board. It would seem to me that I would say, that is so terrific. You need to go to the meeting and fill out a form and make a presentation. Um, I think that. Uh, um, and writing, outreaching to community, outreaching to the community and to the stakeholders, allowing them to um, become more involved is, is a key point as well. 
Um, I think we were talking, I mentioned earlier about campus morale, and I think encouraging positive involvement is a way to help uh, campus morale, and I think that positive involvement would be to encourage their participation with ideas and policy issues. Thanks. Thank you. Trustee Zia. Hi, Susan. It's uh, very nice finally meeting you. Um, please identify a recent Board of Trustee decision that you feel strongly about. Describe how you would balance student needs, community, and other stakeholders' concerns, and your personal beliefs and values to determine how to vote on the issue. Well, I think that's um, uh, it's got its own tricky answer as well. I decided to, to tackle as the issue that I felt personally about uh, the, um, the cuts, the vocational um, uh, certification cuts that of the 11 certifications that were eliminated. And um, when that information hit the news, I was rather surprised because I know that access and um, trade is an important mission as, uh, as the trustee, you know, as Long Beach City College. And, um, uh, but I realized I didn't know the details about state requirements or financing. I didn't uh, know the details about the number of courses that were being eliminated, and I realized at the time that I was, felt strongly about it that I needed a lot more information. So it seemed to me the information that I would be asking for is I would be asking for research to be on, on the number of students that were taking the courses, the businesses and industries that needed the certifications and needed the workers, um, the cost-benefit analysis on financing. I would look to President Superintendent Oakley's strategic plan and how and his goals and how these kind of cuts would impact the ability of him to succeed at his goals and I would look at other institutions and um, alternatives th uh, that they might provide uh, in order to have the same programs available for our students here and develop some collaborations. Um, does that answer your question? Thank you. Student Thank Trustee you. your question please. Hello, Susan. Nice to meet you. I have a question for you, which is what two experiences have you had in your professional or your voluntary life that you believe would assist this governance team in its deliberations? Um, I served as a trustee with the Fourth Presbyterian Church in Chicago for three years. It's a large church with about 5,000 members, has a $3 million operating, annual operating budget, about 80 programs that go out of the church, both social service and um, uh, whatever, lots of different programs. Uh, we addressed issues related to personnel, construction contracts, negotiations, public relations, and although it was a larger board and the issues of transparency were not quite as, um, uh, as they are here, um, the engagement was with the members of that church was critical. Uh, I certainly learned how to um, balance a budget and read a you know, budget statement and deal with the large endowment that they had um, uh, that was a really telling and valuable experience in my life. The second is that I was president of the Los Angeles Zoo uh, at a time when we were going out for a bond measure. And because of the Brown Act, um, the public's part of the LA Zoo could not submit for the bond in the same way, or promote the bond, I mean, in the same way that a private institution could. And I was the president of Glaza, the um, fundraising arm of the Los Angeles Zoo. So I was the chair uh, with a team, thankfully, and uh, we had a $56 million bond in 1999. Uh, it was a public-private partnership. We did marketing, negotiations. I uh, gave tours of the zoo, including the head of the Howard Jarvis uh, group who uh, came out in favor of it, which was unheard of. And um, uh, I think that bond measure really taught me an enormous amount about uh, fiscal management. All right, very good. Is there anything you'd like to add before we conclude the interview? And I would tell you, you were just past the eight-minute mark, so anything you would like to add before we conclude the interview? Wow. I have to admit that when I was doing it at home, it was much longer. <laughs> I hope I'm not talking too fast. Um, I wanted to uh, add that, that um, I am a, a retired attorney. I do have time to do this job and uh, I would consider it a job. I have enormous commitment and dedication and enthusiasm to come on board. 
Um, I did mention that I, as a, an attorney and a social worker, I'm familiar with confidentiality and fiduciary responsibilities of nonprofits and their tangible assets. As I mentioned, the trustee of Fourth Presbyterian Church, we had, you know, this, that kind of responsibility. Um, I wanted to mention that um, I'm comfortable with myself, despite the fact that I'm talking fast now. Uh, I had a recent board retreat. People were describing each other, and I was really humbled when somebody mentioned that I was schmaltzy and a mensch, and uh, you know, people that had known me for a long time. Um, I'm a quick learner, and I'm high integrity. Um, I love Long Beach, and I love Long Beach City College because, and I know that, um, uh, a lot of people know that I love Long Beach City College because of my son, including Beverly O'Neill. Um, I, uh, I bring a lot of experiences and uh, some wisdom, and I would really enjoy being a part of this team. Thank you very much. Uh, the next individual is uh, uh, Leon. Foster. Where are you? And Leon, as you come to the podium, again, I'll say that you have five minutes self-introduction. I will let you know when you're at the four minute mark by doing this. Uh, and then during the comments for the questions, I'll give you five minutes, 10 minutes, and then when you get to the 14 minute mark, I would do that to you. So please don't take it as I'm trying to slow you down, but I'm just trying to keep you uh, on the time. So with that, uh, your name for the record, and uh, you may be begin with your five minute self-introduction. All right. My name is Leon Foster. And go ahead. Good evening, board, trustee members, college students, faculty, staff, and community members. I am Leon Foster, and I'm honored this evening to share my qualifications and motivations to serve as a provisional trustee for Area 2 of the Long Beach City College District. A little about me. I am a product of Long Beach, raised in Area 2, one of the more diverse of the district. My own family represents this increasing diversity and microcosm. My wife, Rebecca, is an immigrant from Mexico. Her story is amazing, and it includes courses at LBCC. Our six-year-old son, Diego, is a fine student at a local public elementary. He learned to swim at the liberal arts campus this summer. My first cousins are Cambodian. I grew up on the west side, raised by a single mom. My mother came to Long Beach from Memphis to escape the climate of racial inequity in the south. She was a classroom teacher teaching second and third grades, all in the LBUSD for 37 years. Education, as it was explained to me, was a great equalizer through which one could attain a better life. After graduating high school, I thought higher education was a good idea, recalling the frequent conversations of my mom. I applied sight unseen to one school. No counselors, no academic advisors, no campus tour, no specific plan. I was accepted to UCLA and off I went. I thought I'll cruise through this like I cruised through high school and I would be set. The school was a massive research university. The catalog of class is a tome with a vague roadmap to plot one's way. The freshman and sophomore general education classes were enormous. I know now that many colleges receive funding based on how many students are enrolled and the large classroom size reduced the university's cost per student. Understandable, but a better path would have helped. Course selections, lab positions, externships, I was lost. I found myself just going to class, working, studying, going home. Tuition was another matter entirely. I was always stressed about money, only dimly aware that some of the classes I wanted got me no closer to the degree I needed. I wasn't going to quit as this was not my style, but at the same time, I didn't ask for help because at the time, it was not my nature. And that remains true for many, especially in Area 2 of this city. I graduated and got a job as an analyst at a boutique economics firm. I worked with a team of economists on a range of large antitrust and environmental litigation. I researched and wrote on law and policy, super fund and deregulation strategies, cap and trade, telecom, patent infringements. In this capacity, I learned a tremendous amount about the need for balance between competing interests of the corporation and the individual the economy, and the environment. I went to law school. I interned at the General Counsel Office of the Portland Development Commission. The projects underway at the PDC were nothing short of amazing. Here was policy in action, converting abandoned factories into business incubators, providing inclusionary housing, innovating use of new market tax credit. After graduation, 
I was hired by the general counsel office, but I wanted to practice redevelopment, and I needed to go back to Long Beach. Now, redevelopment agencies and community colleges have a great deal in common. They both pledge a better future to the communities they serve. They both require innovative and visionary approaches from dedicated and passionate leadership, staff, and individuals working in coordination with an engaged community. As a redevelopment officer, I work in the central and north project areas of Long Beach, which directly corresponds to Area 2. I relish being constantly in contact with the community, collaborating with project area committees, neighborhood organizations, business associations, schools, and parks who understand the needs and prioritize solutions, often through public-private partnership. I developed a long-lasting relationship with the community that continues today. Redevelopment was dissolved in 2009, a decision with which I disagreed and fought but understood. Policy like law is a living framework that evolves to meet the needs of the organizations it serves. In the recession, education and infrastructure outweighed development incentives. I transferred to the gas and oil department here in Long Beach, relying on knowledge of regulated industry from my consulting days, and I bring the same spirit of innovation to that department. I'm currently leading the transition to information systems which will revolutionize how utilities services are provided in Long Beach. My passion for the community is as immense as it ever was. I continue to serve on the board of Leadership Long Beach and recently rolled off the board of Power for You. I'm secretary treasurer of the Long Beach Management Association. I still volunteer at my son's school and coach his football and baseball team. I'm not an education policy expert, so policy analysis and community engagement have been the focus of my career, and I'm a very quick study. My passion for the community is second to none. My mom moved to Long Beach in pursuit of equality and opportunity, and I remain here for the same reason. I'm a product of the community, and I know it well. I benefited from public education institutions, including LBCC. I see endless potential. I'm applying because the community deserves it. My goal is to represent the community at the college and the college to the community. I have a keen desire to join this board and this college community and will work tirelessly in collaboration to realize its pledge for a brighter future for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Baxter. Yeah, good evening, question. Leanne. What do you see as the most important issues to be addressed district-wide in the Long Beach Community College District and how would you approach these issues with your fellow board members? Well, I see the most important issues as completion, equity, and preparedness for job market. With regard to completion, a central te tenant of the college is to expand student attendance, including low-income, minority, and other underrepresented students. However, under-preparation of many of these students has translated into much lower levels of completion defined as an associate's degree, meaningful credentials, and transfers leading to graduation. I will work with my fellow board members in the and the college community to continue paving a road that is clearly marked, utilize technology to analyze course selections, expand transfer pathways and uh, developmental courses, broaden advisory services, and monitor student progress. With regard to equity, Long Beach City College holds diversity as central to its core mission. Given the large number of underprepared students, and constrained government resources, maintaining this diversity can be difficult. The reality is that students who succeed at the lowest rates are minority and low-income students. I will work with my fellow board members and the, and the community to enhance remedial education opportunities, expanding modular remedial class delivery using self-paced computer technology, exploring combining course credits with remedial work or tailoring entry requirements to level of preparation. And lastly, job market. Long Beach City College has the responsibility to constantly evaluate labor market and manage program offerings to prepare graduates for the greatest success. The goal is to ensure strong job prospects for graduates, and to do so, it must align its programs with projections of what decent wage job will be. I will work with members of the college community uh, and faculty and trustees to help make sure this college is offering the right programs. Moreover, I would work with my colleagues and help students make the right choices with their course curriculum. Lastly, I would encourage the college community to take a serious look at the performance of SB 850, the Community College Baccalaureate Program. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Otto. Welcome. Thank you. That's good. How does an effective board of trustees ensure opportunities for faculty, students, classified staff, community members, and other stakeholders to get their views to the board on important policy issues without seeming to be advocating one side or the other? 
It's a balancing act. But also, the board must remember its role. Trustees are responsible for ensuring that their colleges are integral parts of their communities and serve ever-changing needs. Effective boards form a cohesive group able to articulate and represent public interests to establish a climate for learning and monitor the effectiveness of the institution, but do, but do not do the work of the institution. They establish standards for the work, the policies they establish. Boards are accountable to the community for the performance and the welfare of the institutions they govern. So how do boards do it? They act in unity and represent the community. They think strategically, have vision, and establish policies and develop metrics to monitor institutional perform performance. Trustees serve as fiduciaries to protect and enhance the financial, physical, and other assets of the district and balance the needs of current and future district constituents. Thank you. Trustee Zia. Hi, Leon. Welcome. Thank you. Please identify a recent Board of Trustee decision that you feel strongly about. Describe how you would balance student needs, community, and other stakeholders' concerns, and your personal beliefs and values to determine how to vote on the issue. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> on January 23rd, 2013, the Board of Trustees made a difficult decision to discontinue 11 vocational programs. I understand the programs were selected after a process that included a review of the impact of the programs to the job market, and how the programs measured against the effectiveness of other college programs, as well as included input from faculty. Now, I know that students expressed concern over the process and noted a lack of input from others in the college community. I believe the impact of this decision to the students, faculty, and staff are significant, as vocational programs represent a clear path to greater economic success for many students. Yet I know in times of economic austerity, these reductions allow LBCC to direct its finite resources to courses and programs which serve the broadest numbers of students. I know the effect of budget decisions well. It eliminated an entire public benefit industry redevelopment that this city relied on. All decisions that come before the Board of Prestige are, are important, and the Board must take its mandate as fiduciaries to the college and representatives of the college community seriously and make the decisions that are in the best interest of everyone in the college community. In doing so, it must be creative and innovative and working collaboratively to find solutions that serve the diverse interests of the community. Student Trustee Root. Hello, Liam. What two experiences have you had in your professional or your volunteer life that you believe would assist this governance team in its deliberations? I'll cite two. In my professional life, I would like the governance team to consider my involvement and the design and completion of the new North Long Beach Neighborhood Library. The project is a result of years of redevelopment agency and community persistence and resilience. This new library sprang from a long-term collaboration between community leaders, planners, librarians, and city historians to re-envision the historic but dilapidated Atlantic Theater and to create a new public space, space and plaza. The funding was provided by Build America Bond, which I helped procure and that were available to the RDA even after its dissolution. Thanks to the community input, the library involved, evolved from mayor, a mere collection of books into an information center, complete with multifunctional spaces, allowing gatherings as small as business meetings to as large as lecture series to take place in the section of the library that will be accessible after hours. Second is, in my volunteer life, I would like to cite my involvement in the executive board of Leadership Long Beach. Leadership Long Beach has carried out its mission to develop and connect principal leaders to strengthen the community. This means more than simply training people to lead. It means instilling them with a sense of dedication to the Long Beach community, creating a passion within each participant for the betterment of the city and a commitment to working together to achieve it. On May 31st this year, we cele celebrated our 25th anniversary, and I look forward to many more. Thank you. And the final question, you have uh, plenty of time actually a seven minute mark. Uh, is there anything you'd like to add before we conclude the interview? If I would, if I could, I'd like to share a story. Um, in my second quarter at UCLA, the resident assistant came to me and asked if I could watch my roommate, a kid from Riverside. He had just withdrawn from all his classes 
and he was expressing thoughts of suicide. So I stayed with him as he explained how he didn't fit in and how his dad was going to be furious at him for wasting tuition and failing at school. I remember his face as we worked to pack up his belongings while his parents silently loaded the car. I hoped he would be all right. Several years went by. I graduated, moved on to a job, and moved on with my life. But then at a concert at the Olympic Auditorium in downtown Los Angeles, I saw my freshman roommate. He had this massive mohawk and uh, a big grin on his face. Uh, he explained that he returned to Riverside and went to a local city college, where he got his head together, got his grades together, and later transferred to UC Riverside. He was near graduation and was working as a programmer in a tech firm. He thanked me for being with him his last days at UCLA and stated that it took him dropping out for his parents to understand that he needed a different route. I shook his hand and watched him disappear into the crowd. What I'd like to leave you with is community colleges, this community college, plays a pivotal role in our community. And I have a strong desire to help foster its ever important role into the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Madam Secretary, the next one will be uh, Mario. <coughs> Good evening, Mario. Uh, the instruction is five minutes. I'll be the one to give you a one-minute warning when you reach that uh, on your self-introduction. I'll also let you know when you reach the five, the 10, and the 14-minute mark during the, the questions as we go through that. So just, just be aware of I'm going to give you some of our hand signals. Uh, with that, if you could introduce yourself for the record and then proceed with your self-introductions for five minutes. Okay. Um, my name is Mario Gonzalez. So President uh, and Trustees, I want to thank you for the opportunity uh, for me to come before you this evening and share with you why I am the right person to represent Area 2 and the College District. I made a commitment to dedicate my life to public service at a very young age. I knew that I was placed on this earth to serve the public. My parents came to this country with less than a third grade education, seeking the American dream. For them, the American dream was to see their four children succeed in life and pursue higher education. Born and raised in the west side of Long Beach, growing up wasn't easy. At that time, the west side was rampant with drugs, gangs, and violence. And because my parents could not read, I remember my sister having to fill out our emergency cards every single year. Reflecting back, all of those obstacles working against my success, I was meant to fail. And sadly, many of my friends in, in the neighborhood did. At 15, I started volunteering for the Long Beach Department of Health and Human Services. And I participated in many leadership programs, such as the well-known Youth Leadership Long Beach. A year later, I was hired as a peer health educator while I was attending Milliken High School. You see, I never had any issues with my grades or passing any of my classes. And it wasn't until I was accepted as a freshman at California State University, Long Beach, when I couldn't pass my remedial English course. I was confused, I was, I was really embarrassed, I felt ashamed of myself because I was told by the university that I was going to be dismissed if I couldn't pass that class. Unknowingly, I started college with two learning disabilities. And I was one of those students that fell through the cracks. My sister Myrna, a Long Beach Unified School District teacher that's here today, advised me to see a neurologist. And after several exams, I was diagnosed with attention deficit disorder and dyslexia. I was then referred to Disability Student Services on campus. And with the help of Disability Student Services and many years of therapy, I was able to overcome these disabilities. I've learned new learning techniques and continued to succeed academically and professionally. And not only was I able to achieve my bachelor's, but I, was also, I also earned my master's degree and I'm currently attending UCLA. I know firsthand the struggles of the students that, are, that, are, that they're facing today. I've experienced them personally. 
And if I was, if I was, if it wasn't for the guidance that I received from my mentors like Mario Cordero or Ron Arias, I wouldn't be here in front of you sharing my story or seeking appointment. During my 12 years at the health department, I was responsible for designing behavioral changing programs that targeted youth and young adults. I was responsible for all the high school and college interns and ensure the professional development plan was achieved. I was instrumental in building and leading the Los Angeles Regional Teen Pregnancy Prevention Collaborative. I helped implement a strategic plan that prioritized monies and populations to prevent the spread of HIV in the county of Los Angeles. I have experience making hard decisions and working with individuals who may have different viewpoints from mine. I know what it takes to work collaboratively on boards. In my current capacity as a public relations specialist for the Harbor Department, I'm responsible for educating and informing the community. I serve as a liaison to many community groups, organizations, and coalitions. I am currently an advisor for the Poly High School Pacific Rim Academy and a board member for the Workforce Investment Board Youth Council. I'm a lead staff member um, <clears throat> that is currently expanding the port's partnership and educational outreach programs and strengthening those partnerships with Long Beach Unified School District, LBCC, and CSULB. In closing, I am a product of Long Beach Public Schools, and I share a very similar story to residents in the second area, in the area two. I am seeking this appointment because I believe in the mission of the college, and I want to make a difference to protecting and promoting the district. I want to work with you to help find solutions and uh, to the current problems, Dis discover new innovative ways to meet the needs of our district. I want to work with you to ensure student programs are aligned with workforce trends. I want to work with you to make certain that all students are provided with access, equity, and the tools needed to succeed. I bring a very different perspective, a new set of skills and experiences that I believe this college district needs and would benefit from. I possess the passion and the experience to serve this district. I know that I am the right person to represent Area 2 on this board and work alongside of you. I look forward to answering any of your questions you might have, and thank you so much for letting me introduce myself. Thank you, Mario. Uh, Trustee Baxter, first question. Good evening, Mario. Good evening. Uh, what do you see as the most important issues to be addressed district-wide in the Long Beach Community College District, and how would you approach these issues with your fellow board members? 